All right. Hello to everyone from the USD Faculty of Pharmacy. So this is going to be the first of my series of videos tackling the subject of biochemistry. So I'm assuming that most of the people that are going to see this are second year students who have already passed their organic chemistry courses. And uh, I don't really, I won't really ask you guys if you got a high or low grade in org chem. Important thing is you pass and now you're ready for the next phase of your chemistry. And then after biochemistry, there will be a lot more chemistries because apparently you will graduate with every sem you've passed through having a chemistry. So this is one of the chemistry subjects. So let's start. Unlike organic chemistry, biochemistry focuses on a little more specificity. It's a little more specific than org chem that is. So if you were attentive during my introduction to organic chemistry, you should know by now that many organic compounds are not really things that you see in bodies of humans or in animals or in living organisms in general such as plastics right that's one example paper all the papers come from trees and many synthetic components chemicals or drugs which are organic compounds are not really part of our living systems but biochemistry coming from the prefix bio all right bio meaning life we talk now here about organic compounds that are present in living systems. Alright? In living systems, such as you and me, and all the dolphins and the fishes and the birds, the lizards, not even, even not just the animals per se and humans, but also plants, fungi, and even bacteria. So we're going to talk about those compounds. And in a general uh, concept, we have four major classes of these compounds, and they are termed as biomolecules, all right? So biomolecules are the compounds, or the classes of compounds we usually see in living systems, and we have four major classifications of biomolecules, and so I'll just tabulate them to make it easier. Right. We have four. All right. The first is proteins, or the building blocks of life. Okay, so proteins have many different functions, and as a matter of fact, if there weren't proteins in our bodies, practically every single function of our uh, bodily systems of, or our organs will be gone. That's how important they are. All right. And then the next classification or the next set of biomolecules would be nucleic acids. So if proteins are the building blocks of life, nucleic acids are actually the ones that code for the building blocks of life. In short, these are like um, databases wherein we get uh, what we need in order to produce these proteins. So if this does not exist, we wouldn't be able to produce those compounds which are very important or very vital to our um, living all right, or to our function as um, organisms. Then the next would be lipids or lipids. They have also many different functions, but one main uh, thing that they have in common is that they are very water insoluble. All right, or in another way to put it, they are very nonpolar. All right, so that's their ge general classification because even in their structure, there is nothing really very common in the structure among different types of lipids because as we will see when we get the lipids there are many different types of lipids and finally we have carbohydrates right other than the fact that, are, that uh, people who want to lose weight uh, <laughs> keep away from carbohydrates it's also important to note that carbohydrates are very essential in such a way that they are the primary energy source of our uh, bodies and of course if we, if we do not have energy we die so we need to get these carbohydrates so that we would continue to live but other than that there are also other functions of carbohydrates that other besides or besides being just sources of energy all right then finally uh, an, a special note that I would like to consider here is that proteins and nucleic acids are uh, are usually found as uh, polymers, all right. They are usually found as polymers, or they are found as very long chains, 
composed of smaller building blocks or smaller components known as monomers. So if you can see the prefixes, poly means many and mono means one. So if we have many of these monomers and then we weave them up together, we get the polymer. All right, and as I have said, proteins and nucleic acids are usually polymers. So what are their monomers? So we won't we will go through these biomolecules one by one, but I will already say in advance that we have the monomers of proteins, all right, known as amino acids. So amino acids, a lot of them, when you combine together, you get proteins, all right, as a general rule. And for nucleic acids, their monomers are known as nucleotides. I wanted to uh, note this because people might get confused um, nucleic acids are polymers already or are the polymeric form, form while amino acids for proteins are just the monomers because they both have the, the name acids in them although people don't usually get the, these interchanged or switched but just to clarify that further carbohydrates also sometimes exist as polymers although the most most of the carbohydrates we use as energy sources are monomers or, or two monomers known as dimers they can also exist as polymers if you have many uh, carbohydrates woven up together and if they, if they are polymers they are uh, simply known as polysaccharides and if they are um, existing as polysaccharides then you call those building blocks or the monomers of polysaccharides simply you just replace the word poly with mono so you get monosaccharides for lipids, they don't really uh, usually exist as polymers, so there's no common name for their polymeric forms and their monomeric forms. But there, so that's the introduction to the biochemistry, and we will go through the different biomolecules one by one.